Hello and welcome to the four part MBA series with foreign admits. This is video number four and our final video in the four part MBA series. In video number one, we covered the profile that you need to build up for yourself if you want to apply for an MBA abroad. And in video number two, we covered the differences between the one year and the two year MBA program. In video three, we discussed the different types of MBA specializations and the difference between the MBA and the MIM and the MBA and the Masters in Finance. In this video, which is the final video in the MBA series, we're going to be talking about the MBA timelines and application process. The MBA admissions timeline is actually quite confusing for a lot of different students. You don't know what is required and you don't know when you need to start. So for you to prepare well in advance for an MBA program, start preparing as soon as possible. So whether you're applying to one, three, five or 10 business schools, this is the timeline that you can follow and at least get to understand what are the different aspects of applying to an MBA abroad. So this is what the timeline actually looks like. I'm going to break down this timeline for you step by step. But here is an overview of what the timeline looks like. So start right now if you want to apply for an MBA in 2024, which means your application deadlines will be 2023 September. So what do you need to do from now to September 2023? I'm going to be starting with right now, which is 2022 April. Number one thing you need to do is your profile evaluation. Figure out where you stand right now. If you don't know where you are right now, you do not know what your gaps are in your profile. So where you stand right now, what is your current position, what is your job, then understand what types of extracurricular activities you need to do. How do you build your personal brand? What types of projects you can do apart from your 9 to 5 job? What can you do in your job to build up your leadership skills or take initiatives? All of these aspects are obviously going to take you time, so therefore preparing as soon as possible is really important. Number two, April to about August of 2022, you need to start preparing for the GMAT or GRE exams. Firstly, this takes a lot of time because all of you are working professionals. You do not have the five, six hours in the day just to study. So you need to prepare for this much in advance. It's going to take time for you to get back into studying, figuring out the GMAT or the GRE, which exams that you need to take, which institute you should go for, for actually helping you or tutoring you in any of these subjects, as well as actually attending the GMAT and taking multiple attempts. So all of this GMAT or GRE preparation is going to take you a while. So give yourself that time, at least four to six months to start studying for the GMAT or the GRE, taking the exam and then taking it another time as well. Figuring out the GMAT or the GRE and which exam to take actually depends on the schools that you might be applying to. A lot of MBA colleges abroad, including Harvard, INSEAD, Stanford, all of them actually are now accepting the GRE as well. So you need to decide whether you want to take the GMAT or the GRE exam. Write to the colleges, find out which exam works better for you and your profile. The GMAT is harder than the GRE, so decide which exam that you need to take. You might also, as an international student, need to take the TOEFL or the IELTS exam. For the next four to six months till August or September of 2022, you need to figure out what exams you need to take and take these exams. So that was step number two. Step number three, September to December of 2022 is when you actually make up your college list based on your first or second attempt of these exams. Because most of the colleges do have a minimum cutoff or an average score of their GMAT or GREs, you will know exactly where you stand based on these exams. So once you've taken the exams, then you know your college selection and which colleges you should apply for. So which schools you should apply for? This is a question that we get asked a lot. The first thing that you need to understand is of course your career goals. So once you understand your career goals and know what industries you want to get into, basis that you can select which school will actually suit your career goals and your current profile. Do your research. There are a lot of MBA programs across the world. In video number three, we discussed the MBA in strategy, MBA in entrepreneurship and the MBA in technology, but there are obviously also different types of MBA specializations. So depending on what you want to study and which university offers those courses, that is how you decide which universities for MBA you should apply to. Secondly, start networking with these colleges. Make your list of about 20 to 25 schools. Do your research online, speak to alumni, speak to these colleges and figure out if this MBA program is suited for you or no. 
The third thing in this phase is that there will also be a lot of admission events either happening online or in person. So you should definitely attend all of these admission events between September to December of this year and that will help you decide which schools you should apply to. So coming to January to March of 2023, having at least a list of 10 colleges at this time, you need to start understanding the exact application process and essays for all of the colleges that you have shortlisted for yourself. Here is when you understand your career goals, your personal story that you're going to be talking about in the essays as well as your resume. These three aspects take a lot of time to drill down. Why? Because here is when you're actually talking about your personal journey, your story, why you want to do an MBA, why you want to do an MBA at this particular college, how will the MBA actually add to your profile or your career path, what are the different aspects of the MBA at this college that you're going to enjoy, what will you do on the campus and how will you add to the classroom, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what is your story that you're going to tell the college on why they should pick you. This is where you write down all of your thoughts and understand what is the career path and professional journey you're going to talk about in your essays. This is also a time when you can take the TOEFL or the IELTS if you haven't done so already. March to May of 2023, you're going to be understanding your letters of recommendation. Firstly, you need to select the people who are going to give you your letters of recommendation. Some colleges require to have an academic letter of recommendation and a professional one. Some of them are okay with both professional, some of them have other criteria as well. Depending on your profile and what you've done in undergrad, where you work right now, it takes time for you to understand who you want to actually talk about you in your letters of recommendation. So the first thing is selecting. Second thing is actually getting the letters out. You will have to spend time with this person to help them understand what the letter of recommendation is and the exact process that is involved because the college will actually send them a link separately. They will have to upload the letter of recommendation in confidence, which means you don't get to see what they write. They will have to do this on their own. So helping them to understand the technology behind this, what is the process, how the college will correspond with them, all of that takes time. So please keep this in mind while figuring out your letters of recommendation. May to August of 2023 is actually doing the MBA applications online. It's quite a tedious process so give yourself time for each school. There are different aspects that you need to fill out. Everything from family, your documentation, your passport details, your personal details, your resume, letters of recommendation and the actual MBA essays as well. This is the time where you focus and hone down each of the essays of the MBA application. Now a lot of colleges have between 5 to 10 essays that you need to write. Some are obviously mandatory, some are supplementary. Each college has different questions and different types of questions that they will be asking you in your essays. So you need to give yourself a lot of time to write the essays, revise it, get it reviewed, get it edited or if you're using a consultant or a company, get it reviewed by them. All of this takes a lot of time. So figuring out your essays is actually going to take you about three to four months. September to October 2023 are mostly when all around one application deadlines are. So here is when you upload all of your applications and submit your entire MBA application online. Why is it important to go for the round one deadlines? The main thing is you're an international student. Round one is when no one has applied to any of these colleges. If you wait till round three or four, they have obviously filled up a lot of their seats with candidates who have applied in round one and two. Applying by round one or round two is essential if you're an international student from countries like India because a lot of students from India will be applying. And secondly, if you are from non-traditional MBA backgrounds, which are not consulting, not banking, not finance. This is when you can apply and get in and tell your story much more convincingly. In round one, every seat is open. So you have a fair chance against everyone else to actually get into this MBA program. Because MBAs are so competitive in nature, it is best for you as an international student to hit round one or round two deadlines because by round three and four, they probably have filled up most of their classes and only really, really good candidates make it in round three and four. Here's a quick review of the MBA deadlines. Round one is around September to October, round two is December to January and round three is March to April. The other important reason of why you should go for round one is you can actually get some of the scholarships because no one has claimed them as yet. If you're waiting for round three and four, most of the scholarships would have been taken. 
September to December 2023, you have applied for round one or round two. This is the time when you start preparing for the interviews that are going to be conducted. The MBA interview process can be quite intimidating for a lot of students because they've never done something like this before. Most of the interviews nowadays are of course conducted online, but the college can also have alumni conduct the interview for you. Some colleges actually give you tasks like preparing a presentation or certain questions that they need you to answer in the interview. So get yourself prepared. Firstly, practice. Practice, practice, practice as many times as it takes. Practice with friends, with family, as well as any professional mentors that you might have. They want to know if you're clear about your career goals, if you know what you're talking about, if you know what your personal brand is and how you communicate it effectively to them in that interview. So know yourself, know what you did in your job, know your essays, know your resume. You need to know what you did and be genuine and authentic when communicating with these colleges. Please do not lie on your resume, lie on your application or lie in the interview. It is not worth it. So take this very, very seriously. That alumni or the person conducting this interview is going to give the final answer to the colleges whether they should take you or not. This is the final round. So be prepared and practice as much as you can. Now we're in the final stages, February to March of 2024. You have either heard back from the universities, yes or no. You know whether you should apply for round three or four in any other universities. So this is where you figure out got in, not got in, if you've got in, which colleges you want to go to and how you're going to prepare yourself for these colleges. There's a long timeline as well here because you need to apply for your student visa, you need to get the visa appointment, you need to get all the paperwork from this university process. So this also takes a couple of months. The absolute last phase which is April to September of 2024, this is crucial because here is when you actually end up quitting your job figuring your flights, preparing to actually leave India and go to study abroad, which is of course a lot of different things, including accommodation, finances and everything else that it takes to leave India and study abroad. But the most important thing here is actually quitting your job, telling your boss that you've got into an MBA program and actually quitting. It's an important phase because it is intimidating and daunting and you don't want to leave your company in bad taste. You don't want to leave on a bad note with anyone. So please do not leave the company or just hand in your resignation letter. Do it in a proper way. Talk to your boss, talk to your colleagues, talk to the HR of the company and tell them that you're leaving for an MBA program. Because why? Because a lot of times it happens that students who have studied abroad come back to India to work. And this is when you will require your network in India again. So please understand this and take the time to do this properly. One of the main things that you need to take into consideration while applying for the MBA is of course finances. Financing the MBA is important, not just the tuition fees for the MBA, but all other aspects of the MBA application process as well. Everything costs money. Taking the GMAT or GRE or the IELTS or the TOEFL costs money. Applying to each of the universities costs money. Sending your GMAT scores to some of the colleges will cost money. The visas and flights cost money. Living expenses abroad cost money. And of course, the tuition for the MBA itself. So you need to prepare your finances accordingly if you want to do an MBA abroad. The MBA application process is quite stressful, it is overwhelming and it is intimidating as well because there are a lot of different aspects to it. So that is why preparing a year and a half to two years in advance is actually very beneficial for you so you can take it step by step and not get stressed out by the entire process. If you're planning to apply for an MBA abroad, foreign admins can actually help help you evaluate your current profile and help you in each step of the application process. So if you want to know more, just click the link in the description box below or head to www.foreignadmits.com. Or if you want to work with me, Ananya Madhavan, on your MBA application, you have any questions on studying abroad, just click the link in the description box below and book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me today. So that was the end of our four part MBA series where we've given you a comprehensive overview of exactly what you need to do to prepare for an MBA abroad. If you haven't watched our previous videos in the MBA series, they are linked in the description box below. So best of luck on your MBA journey. If you have any questions for us, please drop them in the comment box below. Like and share this video with as many people as possible. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.